This week, Marvel doubles down on Damnation. We're at the end of an era for action comics, and New Mutants Dead Souls hits a number one issue. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is a Monday, which means that we're going to be talking about the books that are coming out this Wednesday. I'm all hopped up on cough syrup, so let's just jump right in. Ben Riley's Scarlet Spider, issue number 15, kicks off, and that is a Doctor Strange Damnation tie-in. So this is going to bring, bring the Scarlet Spider into the storyline of Damnation, which we saw at the end of Damnation number two. So is this going to be a big addition to a storyline that isn't really as stellar as I was hoping that it would be? I don't necessarily know, but this is going to be a book where you're going to find out exactly how Ben fits into the storyline overall. We also get Doctor Strange number 387, which continues on with a specific storyline, and hopefully this shows us how the good Doctor himself became a Ghost Rider. We know that he lost his soul, but what happened between the loss of the card game, getting his knee smashed in by the Mighty Thor, and where he's at right now. We also jump into The Flash number 42, which is continuing a storyline, Perfect Storm, I believe that it is, but it's really just one of those situations where I'm waiting for where Flash Wars is going to pick up in a few issues from now. So Joshua Williamson's been solid his entire run on this book, so it's going to be something for you Flash fans to pick up. However, it's not necessarily the book that's got my interest, because that one's coming in a few months. Another book that's picking up on a previous storyline is All New Wolverine number 32, which is going to bring back the Orphans of X before we get into the Old Woman Laura storyline, which is coming up in a few issues. So this is going to be kind of a placeholder where we pick up kind of these pieces that is really going to push Laura Kinney and Gabby's characters forward based on this previous history that they've had with the Orphans of X. Tom Taylor's been doing a really good job with All New Wolverine, and it might not necessarily be for everybody, but it's a book that I find entertaining. I like Tom Taylor's writing style, so that means that it's something that I've been enjoying, but it might not necessarily be for you guys. Another book that might not necessarily be for you guys, because it's not necessarily for me, is Wonder Woman, and Wonder Woman number 42 is going to continue on. We've got Jason, her brother, that's picked up in this and it's continuing on with the grail dark side storyline this kind of like dark gods aspect of things that james robinson's been writing about and it kind of lost me ever since greg rucka came off the title it hasn't really been the book for me but with the brand new dark knights metal storyline which is going to be jumping off in may i am really excited for that one so it's Wonder Woman's not necessarily a must-buy for me right now, but it's about to be sometime soon. Then, hot off the heels of Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number 300, we get issue number 301, and evidently, things have gotten so confused and convoluted and confiscated, and they're terrible. Well, no, they're not terrible. The book's not terrible, but what we have to do is we have to get into one of the most unfortunate plot devices in comic books, and that is time travel. Or at least that's the insinuation that I get from the preview of this book. I'm not super stoked on it, but... I'm a Spider-Man fan, and I've got to kind of see where this goes. Since I'm not really a huge fan of time travel, I'm going to jump over into something that I do like exploring a little bit more, and that's the cosmology of a particular universe, and Sideways number two is going to do that. So while we have our young hero, this kind of Spider-Man parallel, as a lot of people have pointed out, he is going to be kind of on the hook for this judge of cosmic time and space. So he's been ripping holes in the universe, and we're going to see what kind of consequences our young hero has. But overall, the art by Kenneth Rockefort has been fantastic, and I'm really excited to see see where this goes. It's one of the most promising books to come out of DC's New Age of Heroes, so it's one that I'm definitely going to be picking up. Another book that I'm going to be picking up is Punisher number 222, where Matthew Rosenberg's been taking Frank Castle, putting him in the War Machine armor, and then basically having him overthrow an entire country. It's been one of the most ridiculous things, and Frank really has the taste for blood at this point in time, so how heavy is he going to get in this overall arc, and what it's going to do to set up the character moving forward? You know, once he's gone this kind of crazy, how is the rest of the Marvel Universe going to react? This is where we're going to get a lot of that information, setting up the next arc of the Punisher storyline. Speaking of continuing storylines, we need to talk about Detective Comics 976, which is the beginning of the Batman Eternal arc. So not only is the Batman Eternal arc the last arc of James Tynan's run on Detective Comics, which ends on 981, but this is going to be telling the story of Batwoman and how she jumps over to that kind of, you know, fall of the Batman storyline where we saw the Batman of Tomorrow and what Tim Drake's going to evolve into. It's the, really the breaking of the Bat family, according to James Tynan, and I can't wait to see more. Detective Comics has been extremely solid since the beginning of DC Rebirth, Same for a few spots with anarchy and spoiler and all that kind of stuff, but overall, consistency has been key in this book, and it's one that I always recommend. Sticking with the end of storylines, let's talk about Action Comics 999. So Action Comics 999 is going to be telling more of that Booster Gold, Zod, you know, Son of Zod, that kind of storyline, where they're stuck in time, and now the, the last result, we saw Booster turn back time to save Superman's family without Superman necessarily knowing, and we have Superman interacting with Lois, Jonathan, and General Lane. So this this is going to be Dan Jurgens finishing up this story arc before he tells his final Superman story inside Action Comics number 1000. And 
I mean, I have to say that it's an end of an era. I wasn't super high on Dan Jurgens when Action Comics really kicked off, but overall, just the nostalgia, the throwback to his classic stylings, when we were talking about Death of Superman and all that kind of stuff, for somebody that's had such an impact on Superman's history, I just can't wait to see what he closes out with before we pick up Brian Michael Bendis in his next iteration of Superman, whatever that looks like. Speaking of people with legacy and history, we have the return of the Incredible Hulk, but he's not necessarily incredible in this one. He's immortal. So in Avengers 684, we see the return of Bruce Banner. He's kind of picked himself up out of the rubble of Las Vegas, and he is he's back. You know, he's not dead anymore. He's not dead before like he was in Civil War II, which is absolute garbage and hot trash. You should never read Civil War II. I'm just never going to talk about that again. But... Bruce Banner's back, and now he's kind of this isolated and alone individual in this actual scenario. So from according to Al Ewing, who's going to be writing Immortal Hulk coming out of the Marvel Fresh Start initiative, it's going to be really a setup. There's like a 10-page prologue for the Hulk that's going to be occurring inside 684, so it's a must-buy for people that want to get a, a jump start on that series. So it's one that I'm going to be picking up, and it's, it's definitely... Shit, it's definitely... It's one of those books that I'm really excited to see where they can kind of bring this character and take him back, because there's a lot of inspiration that's being drawn from the Incredible Hulk TV show with Lou Ferrigno way back in the day. So I'm excited for this one. No Surrender hasn't really had me excited that much, but I'm excited for this one. So, one of the books that I'm going to be picking up. Then there's another book that I'm always going to be picking up, and that's Mr. Miracle. So, after a hiatus, you know, Mitch Garrett's had a, had a baby and all that kind of stuff. So, we had a one-month delay in the actual production of Mr. Miracle number 7, and based on the cover, as well as the variant cover, which I'll show right there. So, this is just one of my favorite books when it comes to DC. As far as what DC's publishing initiative is, and Tom King and Mitch Garrett's overall... I am so stoked on this. While a lot of people really give Tom King a lot of shit for how he's writing Batman and everything along those lines, I find that his voice, when it comes to particularly obscure characters where he can take a few more liberties, he doesn't necessarily have to adhere to a lot of people's preconceived notions of those characters, like in The Vision, like in his originals, Sheriff of Babylon, or what he did in Omega Men, and what he's doing right now in Mr. Miracle is a huge thing. It's just immense what he's doing, and I mean, for people that weren't necessarily even aware of who Mr. Miracle is, this is a redefining character moment for this, you know, for, for that part of DC. So I'm really excited to see where this one goes. And this final arc is going to be pretty huge, going from 7 all the way through issue number 12. I'm super excited for this one, and it's a book that you must be buying. And be like me, get both covers, because they're sick. <laughs> Another book that I think is a must-buy is Marvel 2-in-1, so issue number 4 is going to continue the fate of the Four story arc, which we all believe is leading up to the return of the Fantastic Four sometime in June, July, August, whenever the hell they're going to bring back Reed and Sue and the rest of Franklin and Valeria and all those kind of kids. The Kids of the Future Foundation, bring them all back, give us that fantastic universe. But the fate of the Four, the storyline of the Marvel 2-in-1, it's easily become one of the most recommended books from me, simply because it offers a soul, it offers a story, it offers a passion for these particular characters, great character interactions, and it, it really ties things together, and it's that gateway into that fantastic kind of book. They've said repeatedly that this is, at its heart, a Fantastic Four book, so it's one of those things that I'm really excited for, and I've been really happy with coming out of Marvel. I don't necessarily know if the sales figures really relay that, but it's, it's a solid book, and one that you guys should be checking out. Also, over at Independence, I'm not necessarily sure about the strength of the storyline, but the art is something that you can't deny. And Versus number two is coming out by Asad Ribic, and it's about some sort of future story sport uh, when, it, when it comes to war. So basically, they commit war for fun, so there's like television delays and all this kind of stuff. People are like slave soldiers that are there for entertainment. It's, it's very much a, a modern Roman gladiatorial arena situation. I'm not 100% on it, but I mean, I can't deny that it's beautiful. If it's something that you guys really appreciated the first issue of, go grab number two. Now to finish things off, let's talk about Eternity Girl number one, which is a brand new number one. And this is folding out of the Milk Wars, Doom Patrol, JLA crossover. And Eternity Girl slipped her way into the brand new DC Universe and Young Animal imprint as, uh, you know, everything was rebooted after they hit the, the whole little Ultimate Nullifier re hit reset uh, when it came to the end of that series. So Eternity Girl is a brand new title that's going into 
young animal. I'm not 100%, but some of the advanced reviews say that it's a really interesting story to pick up. So it's a book that I'm going to be taking a look at to see if it's something that I might find interesting. Of course, there is a book that I already find interesting, and that is Matthew Rosenberg and Ryan Stegman's New Mutants Dead Souls, which is a six-issue miniseries launching with issue number one coming out this week. The New Mutants have always been a really interesting property. Uh, you know, I really loved Bill Sienkiewicz's art in that run when it came to the early New Mutants, and then it's kind of evolved over time. We saw a lot of introductions of really great characters over the history of New, Mut New Mutants. So going back into the history, taking a look at Magic and the rest of the, the small team and seeing how they've kind of evolved now, I feel like that might be what this is really dealing with. But I'm excited to see where that goes, and it's a book that I think you guys should be checking out because it has a lot of potential. Marvel's miniseries books, you know, one to five, one to six, one to eight issue titles seem to be really interesting topics. And I think that that's a key to publishing initiatives for both DC and Marvel moving forward because it mimics a lot more of the independent books. But I'm going to talk about that in a different video. What I want to know about is what you guys are grabbing. So make sure you hit me up in the comments down below and tell me what you guys are grabbing beyond what I've already mentioned. As always, if you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.